Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. As Jesus approached Jerusalem, knowing that he would give his life for the sins of the world, he sought to dispel the idea that the kingdom of God was going to be established here on earth in the next few days or weeks. He said simply, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. That was it. Now we're considerably downstream from that day. Our world's population has exploded, and now some 2,000 years later, the importance of reaching the law seems to have been lost amidst our affluence and the culture of me and us first. The reality is that only 4% of the 420,000 missionaries in the world today are really working among the unreached, found primarily in China, India, the Middle East, in countries that are hostile to Christianity, and so forth. Yet those who live in countries that are nominally thought of as Christian, who do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, are just as lost as those considered to be pagans who have never heard the name Jesus Christ. The late Oswald J. Smith, pastor of the People's Church in Toronto, used to tell the story of the feeding of the 5,000 when Jesus took a little boy's lunch and did feed 5,000 people. But Smith put it like this. Now, suppose the disciples had taken the loaves and fishes and passed them out among the first row of hungry people, then the second row, and then went back to the first row and gave them a second helping, and the same thing for the next row. Making his point, Smith then asked, how long would it be until the people in the back rows started calling out, Hey, how about us? Don't we count? Have you nothing for us? If you take your Bible seriously and believe what Jesus said, you have to acknowledge there are but two groups of people in the world, those who are saved and those who are lost. There is no third category. Even a casual reading of the New Testament brings rational individuals to conclude that Jesus came on a mission and was willing to give his life to accomplish the purpose for which he came. He not only talked of heaven, but talked of hell as well, using the garbage dump outside the city of Jerusalem to illustrate its ferocity. Vast numbers of people are somewhat familiar with John 3.16. But what immediately followed was a statement saying, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Concurrent with the population explosion have been discoveries that allow us to communicate with vast multitudes of people the world over. The internet, Facebook, broadcasting, television, the printed page— while nothing is more powerful than face-to-face -face communication, we at Guidelines are using every available source to proclaim the good news. Visit our website at guidelines.org to see how we are striving to reach the unreached. But you don't have to travel over 5,000 miles of ocean to reach the unreached. Start with your neighborhood, your friends, even your family. Would you classify them as unreached? A late-night comedian had a Christian on his program and asked him if he believed in hell. When he said he did, the comedian asked what he was doing to reach them. When his guest hemmed hawed, he said, You Christians must really hate someone if you believe he would go to hell and you don't tell him how to be saved. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.